build the initial mass of the mass of the bullet and make that MB is 0 0.01 kilograms. We do not know its initial velocity. That's ultimately what we're looking for. We know we'll, cut, we'll use W for wood. So the mass of the wood is 2.50 kilograms. And then we know the mass here. The bullet is actually wedged into the wood. So the total mass is 2.51 kilograms. And the final velocity here is zero. All right, now, what I saw one person do and what some people did today where they, they, they reasoned that, well, we know that this has potential energy over here, gravitational potential energy, because it's above some reference level being here. And so if we calculate that potential energy, we got the total mass, 2.51 times g times the height, 0.65. And that comes to 16 joules, roughly. So then, if it has 16 joules here of energy, potential energy, then it must have 16 joules of kinetic energy. So figure this has kinetic energy of 16 joules, and that equals the mass of the bullet times v squared. So V is 56 meters per second. Okay, that's not right. So you don't want to do that. Because a bullet is actually going much faster than that. Right? 56 meters per second is not very fast. So what we know is that it did have this potential energy. And that potential energy came from the kinetic energy of the bullet. But what actually happens when the bullet hits this block? Right? This is all mechanical energy at this point. All kinetic energy, a form of mechanical. But when we hit this block, some of that mechanical energy is converted to what? Right? Friction converts it to what kind of energy? Thermal energy, right? So leaving this block then, right, is some thermal energy. So some of that kinetic energy, that mechanical energy, was converted to thermal energy because of friction. Also, there certainly was some sound energy created when the bullet hit the block. So there was some sound energy created. So the mechanical energy that was present, some of it is removed. And so now it's not all present anymore to do the, the work of raising this against gravity. So we need to consider that. What we could find is what was the speed of this when it left here? So in this collision, this bullet is going to hit the block. Energy, mechanical energy is not conserved. But there is something that is conserved. What, what else, what quantity did we look at that maybe it is conserved? Momentum, right? The momentum will be conserved in a collision. So the mechanical energy is not, in this case, what the momentum is. So if we could figure out how much kinetic energy this had, when it started to move to this height, we can get this velocity when they're combined. And then, since it was a collision, we could figure out what the momentum was of this, and then work to get the momentum of the bullet. All right, now, how much kinetic energy did the block and the bullet have when they first started to move after the collision? How much kinetic energy was here that allowed it to go to there? 16 joules, right? Because that's how much potential it had. So that must be the amount of kinetic it had. So we know that the kinetic energy of this thing, when it leaves, is 16 joules. And we also know that 16 joules is equal to 1 half the total mass V squared. So now you solve for V and you got 3.57. So I saw that number a lot. Right, so that's the velocity that these both had when they left here. Okay, now that helps us know how much momentum was here. So now let's look at the conservation of momentum. So you got the momentum of the bullet to start and the momentum of the block. Added together equal the total momentum, which is they're both together after the collision. So we have um, 0 0.01 times velocity of the bullet, which we want to know, plus 2.50, and the block was just hanging there, so it had no momentum.
and then the sum of the two masses and VF we found was 3.57. What equation is that? This is the one from chapter 9, conservation of momentum. Yeah, from the previous chapter. And now we solve for VIB, and we got 896 meters per second. Okay, so the momentum is still conserved even though the energy wasn't. So we had to take advantage of both concepts and work from there. How much energy is converted from mechanical to those other forms? Can you find that? Bullet, how much was there? Right, so the mechanical energy beforehand was due to the bullet. So the initial value was one half times 0.01896 squared. So 4,014 joules. The mechanical energy after was 16 joules. Right? That's all there was after. So the difference between those two is 39.98 joules. So that's how much was actually lost. So this amount of energy here actually equates to 3.998 joules. Now, what this illustrates is that there are two different types of collisions. The first kind is called an inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, the kinetic energy changes and it's lost to other forms. What do you think the other kind is called? Elastic. elastic, right. And in an elastic collision, the energy, kinetic energy, is the same before and after, so it is conserved. Now, what does that word elastic mean? Not just that it stretches, but what? Conforms. Huh? Conforms. Mm, not conforms. Like a rubber band's elastic, correct? Mm -hmm. Why? I stretch it, and then what? Huh? It gets hot it. It does, right? So some of that work goes to friction. It's not completely elastic, but it does have these elastic properties that are pretty evident. So I stretch it, but then why do we call it elastic? Because I could stretch something, and it doesn't mean it's elastic. It comes back, right? It wants to come back to shape. So the actual, the energy I put in could actually become kinetic again, right? And do the work of putting a rubber band back to shape. So that's why something's elastic, because it holds the energy. Kind of think of it as holding it until it uses it again to move itself back to shape. So let's say that that's, I have two pool balls on here. So what I want to say before I talk about that is the harder the object is, the less it permanently distorts. And therefore, the less kinetic energy is lost. So I have two billiard balls here, right? You know billiard balls are, are pretty hard, right? So they're hard, and they don't really keep permanent distortion. So let's say I didn't have any gravity, and I fired both of these balls at each other like this at the same speed. What would happen? They would hit, and then they would take off, right? So the momentum would be conserved. Whatever speeds they came with, if they were identical, they would leave with the same speeds. Okay? But now, what's actually happening when these balls collide? For an instant, they collide, and they actually compress. Right? They don't compress a lot. They don't compress like you would picture a tennis ball compressing. But they do compress. And when they're compressed, that energy is stored inside the ball. And then as it comes back to shape, the balls actually push off of each other and they go their separate ways again. And they would, the energy they come together with is the energy they would leave with. You could just lay that in, right? Okay, and that's because it's elastic. Now, imagine if these were two balls of clay, right? They would come at each other, and what would happen? Squash. They would hit. They would stick together. Why? Because they change shape, and the energy that it uses to change shape with is work, and then that change in shape becomes eventually heat. When you change the shape of something, it changes shape and then that energy becomes heat. So the, the clay balls would stick together. The momentum would still be conserved because they would just come to, come to a rest right here. But they would change shape and then the kinetic energy would be lost as heat. Here, it's returned as they bounce back. So that's the difference between your elastic and your inelastic collision. Now